As you can tell, all four Advent candles are lit. Advent winds to a close. Christmas approaches. We greet each other in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Let's pause so close to Christmas to ask God to forgive us, to prepare our hearts for the celebration of the coming of his Son. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, You, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore the Lord will give them up, until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God. And they shall remain, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubims shine forth. Rouse your power and come to save us. Lord, Make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine, and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the one of your right hand, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, As is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First he says, Sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
my sisters and brothers, the Lord is with you and with your spirit. A reading from the good news of Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think I may have talked about this before in a previous homily. Ancient writers wrote about spirituality using the image of pregnancy. Some even developed ideas of three conceptions in the ear, in the heart, and in the womb. In the ear, hearing of God's plan, awareness. In the heart, reflection on what was heard, a deepening and accepting. And in the womb, the result, an action. This certainly fits the story of Mary. The first conception in the ear is the experience of the visitation by Gabriel. The second conception in her heart, her dialogue and ultimate acceptance of Gabriel's invitation from God. Her third conception, through the power of the Holy Spirit, she carries the Son of God, Jesus, in her body. The readings are remarkably in sync today, the fourth Sunday of Advent, so close to Christmas. In the first reading from Micah, salvation will come from the least likely place. Bethlehem, small and unnoticed, unimportant. The place of the future king, David. He starts as a shepherd and ends as royalty. In the letter to the Hebrews, His solitary life, death, and resurrection will redefine and replace the sacrificial system, that of Jesus. The focus is no longer on the ritual of animal sacrifice, but on obedience to the will of God. All of us and the entirety of us, mind, heart, and body, is now the place of worship. For we can all attune ourself to God. And last, but certainly not least, is the beautiful story of Mary and Elizabeth. It has long intrigued me, intrigued me how women, when first introduced, can almost immediately strike up a conversation of substance. They talk about family, children, similar interests. If guys talk at all at first, it's usually initially awkward. But women seem to enter into conversation so smoothly. Even more touching, to be in on the conversation of two women who are pregnant. The empathy, the sensitivity, the immediate identification and understanding. In today's selection, Mary and Elizabeth are operating on at least three levels. There is the family relationship. They already know each other. There is the mutual state of pregnancy, and there is the shared spiritual experience. They have individually been visited by an agent of God who has revealed to them their part in a larger drama. These women have a lot to talk about. Here's what the readings say to me from Micah. Sometimes I wonder what impact my life makes. In such a large world, can one person make all that much difference? Absolutely, yes. If all of us add just a touch of good to our world, the resulting tidal wave would change the world for the better. 
And imagine how much worse the world would be without our bit of joy or peace or hope or love. From Hebrews, every life is important because each life carries the love of Christ. We participate in his sacrifice, his obedience, his love. We are significant. And from the gospel, we are all giving birth in the world, either to hatred, mistrust, and violence, or to peace, joy, and love. Who or what do you listen to, to conceive of the fruit you carry? And do we reflect on our blessings, or are we concentrating on the negativity? There's a lot of negativity in our world. Because who we listen to and what we reflect on produces only one of two harvests, community or isolation and segregation, peace or anguish and suspicion, love or hatred, selfishness and self-centeredness. The ancient spiritual writers are right. Be careful who, what you listen to. Make sure prayer is an important part of your life always, but especially now so close to Christmas. Because who we listen to and what we reflect on causes our harvest. Let's recite the Apostles' Creed for our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the generous gift of your Son. May we be generous with our gifts, especially to those in need. And at this time, we remember our benefactors who are so generous to us. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless the Providence family for our parents and relatives, our brothers and sisters, our students and staff, our faculty and administration. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Provide a safe and restful break. For our, for our Christmas vacation. Fill our hearts with gratitude and appreciation for all of your gifts. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are endangered by the cold weather, the poor, the sick, the homeless, the unemployed, for those who are affected by the temperature in their work, for those who have COVID, for healthcare workers and first responders, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless those who have requested our prayerful support. I printed the, um, uh, the list of the sick from our last Mass in school, so it's not going to be as long as the list I usually have, but I will, will remember the entire list in our prayers. For the sick, for Connor Jennings and Nikki Houlihan and Mike Vanetti and Bridget Albert and Mark Erickson, Noreen Lionhood, Bob Kaminsky, Rose George and Marlene Sturdy, and Don Duffy. Let's take a moment to, in the quiet of our hearts, remember those who are sick. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for an end to violence and for threats of violence. Let's pray for help for the victims of tornadoes and natural disasters. And let's give praise and thanks for the release of the missionaries from Haiti. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Bless those who have died, especially Dana Aldus, Don Budney, Dave Damaro, Elaine McCarthy, Austin McEwen, Dave Smrecker, and Fabian Urbano. Add your own intentions for those who have died now. For the repose of the souls of those who have died, the consolation of all who grieve, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear us, help us, hold us close to your heart. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread and this wine to offer. Earth has given them. Human hands have made them. They will become our spiritual food and our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be accepted by our loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. People of God, the Lord is with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Mother of Good Counsel, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles, St. Augustine, St. Rita, St. Monica, St. Thomas of Villanova, St. Nicholas of Tolentine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With one mind and one heart we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and you say to us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. To all who joined us today for Mass, Peace to you, your home, your family. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under our roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Please remember, because of the circumstances that keep us from having Mass together up close and in person, um, we ask you to have a spiritual communion. Just talk to God in your heart. Just say something spontaneous to God. I love you. Please come into my heart. Send your son into my heart. Just put that in your own words right now. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God indeed bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
continue to pray hard, especially this week. And uh, for those who won't be with us for Christmas, uh, a blessed Christmas from our family to yours.